Greetings, Queen Yen here, hailing from OU Marketplace here in East Point, Georgia. In case you didn't know, um, I do have a wellness marketplace at The Garden um, that is open Saturdays uh, 11 to 6 p.m., Sundays 12 to 4 p.m., closed on every last Sunday. So um, I came on um, inspired by my October 2024 special, which this month I am doing a special on natal chart unpacking sessions. Um, and so my service special has inspired me to come on and do a mock session with you. So I'm just going to do kind of like a brief mock session. Um, I won't do a whole thing, but I'm going to show you kind of what that session looked like. So first of all, if you don't know what a natal chart, what a natal chart is, let's start there. Um, I'm going to go into the pro the software that I use just to walk you through what we're talking about when we talk about a natal chart. All right. So I'm going to share my screen here and I'm going to pull up the app that I use or this it's an app on your phone, but it's also a computer pro so a computer, pardon me, a website that you can create an account on. And so I created this account, just a mock account. Um, on the site. This is the site we'll be using for your session, um, astrograph.com. But a natal chart is basically showing you when you were born, what did the sky look like? And in astrology, the sky is um, articulated in a chart form. And in this form, it shows where each planet was when you were born, what were the angles to other planets, um, it shows if there is a retrograde happening, if there were any aspects or conjunctions or anything like that happening. That's what this chart shows. If you're not in astrology, this chart can be very intimidating. And you could be like, I have no clue what this means. You can maybe know a little bit of what this means, but um, uh, you, you most likely when you look at it, it just looks like totally foreign, right? And so I just want to make it clear, this chart is not what we're focusing on. What we will be focusing on is the are the planets. We'll be focusing on what is the meaning of and how does this impact you um, when it comes to the planets, where they were in, in as far as the houses go, these sections, as far as what these sections of the sky, okay? <laughs> as far as um, where these planets were found and what sound uh, sign they're in. And so we'll be more so focusing in on this list right here. This list is an all-encompassing list of where um, each planet was when you were born, all right? And so at the beginning of your session, I'm going to ask you kind of like, what is your level of knowledge when it comes to astrology from zero to five? If you place anywhere between three and below, I'm going to cover some basic information that will help you to really understand what astrology is explaining. If it's uh, three and above, we'll go into um, reviewing what certain things mean. We'll go into unpacking some of your planets, and then we'll also cover some of your aspects if you are three and above. Um, and for those who are three and above, you know what I'm talking about when I say aspects, so I won't cover that here. So the benefit of you getting this natal chart unpacking is, first of all, you get to understand what is astrology. Is it really real? You know, some of the things that I hear oftentimes from skeptics is, um, you know, is it really real? Does it really impact us? Absolutely, it does. As above, so below what was going on in the cosmos, in the in the sky, when you were born, absolutely affects you. What does it affect? It affects um, your personality. It affects uh, some of the things that you may gravitate to. It's an energetic thing. And so to try to demystify it a little bit in short, which is kind of difficult, but I'll try my hand at it. In short, everything is energy. The planets um, exert energy forces energy and that energy impacts the earth um this is why when uh the moon is full there's an impact on the earth that's one of the prime examples that i use because anybody can relate to if you understand or uh accept that there is a moon <laughs> and that that moon impacts the earth one of the things we know for sure we can pay attention is 
the water levels rise when there's a full moon and they lower when there's a new moon. Um, if you are familiar with uh, agriculture at all, um, you will know that people plant around the moon cycle because of the energy of the moon having an impact on the land. Um, if you know about the woman's cycle, the woman's cycle is impacted by the moon because of the energy of the moon. So everything up in the sky, not just the moon, has energy, of course. We know the sun has energy. We know those things. It's just that a lot of us are not familiar with the, the science of astrology. So you may not know that the planets, including the sun, the moon, and um, the Chiron and different things, are stationed in various placements throughout the cycle. And so that's what these, these placements are constellations. And these constellations is what many of us, the common person knows when it comes to sign. So if you are a certain sun sign, then your uh, placement of the sun uh, during the, your birth um, date and time was in a specific placement in a specific constellation, which then tells what your sign is. And so um, depending on where that placement is, there were various planets that were placed in different places that has energy and that impacted you. And so the great astrologers of this world, I took my hat off to all that are. I am not an astrologist. I just know about astrology. Um, but the great astrologers, what they do is they look at all of the different aspects of your chart and they translate what could this mean about you? What could this mean about you? And um, it's quite accurate, all right? And I, I want you to also know that it's not, sometimes people think maybe getting your birth chart is like a reading, it's not. It's literally mathematics, it's numbers, it's literally mathematics. Um, it, who, whenever you was born at whatever time and whatever place, when you plug it in, it's literally gonna tell you what was happening in the sky and what does this potentially mean for your life? And it's usually spot on, okay? So um, let me move into doing like this mock session. So the first things first, I'm gonna, you're gonna log into your account. When you log into your account, you're gonna see the current screen. This current screen is gonna show you what the chart looks like today, you know, um, what the sun is in, what phase of the moon is there, is, is the, um, are we in, when's the next Mercury retrograde on both the app and the website, that's the information you'll get from the current chart. I kind of talk about, you know, how I use this current chart, which I don't often use it. Sometimes I'll check in to see what moon phase it is and what sign is that moon in. Um, but oftentimes I don't use this current page. However, if you are interested, you can click on the current, it'll show you this brief information, but it'll also show you everything. It'll show you um, all where um, the planets are. It'll show you where all of the planets are. Um, and when you click into it, it gives you a little information about that. Okay, since the sun is in Libra, see what it says here? It says the sun is the most visible and important, according to Western astrology, planet of, I would have put Western astrology here, at the level of physical life and symbolically representing ego and will. The sun spends about 30 days in each sign so that the cycle of the 12 signs defines our year with sun hour being Western astrology. With sun in Libra, and especially in the beginning of this period at the fall equinox, the focus shifts to collaboration, both business and personal. The maximal sunlight is beginning to withdraw and the concept of partnership with others balances the concept of the single individual just as night balances the day. This is a time when we will all be naturally concerned and involved with others around us, pulling together to make it through the difficult seasons. So it kind of gives you some insight on what this season is all about, what maybe you find yourself focusing in on, or what would be good for you to focus your attention on. Now, Venus, Venus, once you get to know, you know that Venus kind of speaks to relationships, Mercury, um, communication, moon being your um, your innermost being or your intuitive nature or your habits. And so if you click in each one of them, it should talk a little bit about that. I'm going to do the moon here briefly, and then we'll go into this mock, this, this, um, this mock accounts chart to kind of see 
if it was a person who was born at that date and time, what would their, where would their planets be and what would that mean for them? So currently the moon is in Capricorn. It says the moon spends two and a half days in each sign with the moon in Capricorn and achievement and status oriented emotional nature uh, emerges. Today, you and everyone else will likely be feeling focused on duties and responsibilities. There is an atmosphere of stern emotional reserve and the revealing of your serious and sensitive side. In fact, you might feel restricted to some extent in the free expression of emotion. It's a wonderful day to nurture your more ambitious nature. This is a hardworking moon position and you can accomplish a great deal in terms of tasks that will bring to you a strong sense of fulfillment. Indeed, your instinctual nature today is focused on using your resources to make things happen in your world and propel you closer to achieving your goals. The restraint of your emotions can be used to your advantage in the sense that you are not going to be easily distracted by your feelings. At the same time, you do well to guard against the potential of becoming emotionally distant. All right, so... Um, and I can, I mean, some of that relates for sure, because today I've been feeling very much so on top of my tasks, various tasks that I've been kind of put off. I took care of a few of them this morning. You know, I definitely have been um, super focused on, okay, what do I need to get done kind of thing. So I can vouch for that as far as moon is in Capricorn for today's day. So how you can use this is if you are one who are into like daily horoscopes, things of that nature, get, this gives you way more details into what could be happening. If you're really into that, I don't tend to go into daily horoscope because I just like to feel the day out and feel the vibes out. Um, I don't really want other people's words in my mind projecting upon my day or anything like that. So I don't really do daily horoscope. Um, but, you know, for those who are into it, it, I'm sure there's a reason why you're into it. So, hey, I would say go for it. So now this is the current chart. What we'll do in our session, we'll go to your chart, which is up here where this little person, this uh, symbol or emoji for a person is. So I'm going to click there. So Miss Mock, we're going to call her Miss Mock. Miss Mock was born August the 12th, 1954. So we're going to go into my natal chart. Once you go into my natal chart, again, you're going to see that chart um, here. The actual chart is here, but we're going to go into planets and we're going to focus there. I tend to tell, you know, we'll, if you're from zero to three, we'll go into some of the cheat sheets that we use as well. I didn't realize I had so many screens open. <laughs> <laughs> Let me close some of these screens. That's hilarious. Anyway, um, dang, I didn't mean to do that. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna go into some cheat sheets. So I'll put zodiac. I tend to do it just like this, so you can see what to Google yourself. Zodiac sign. Um, I'm gonna put zodiac house chart. Okay, and I'm gonna hit image. And then we're going to pull up, I usually like this one. I, I tend to gravitate to that chart. Um, but as you see, there's so many other ones that you can check out as well. I like to show you that so you can get more understanding about the houses. So we'll go a little bit into the houses, just making sure you understand that that chart is broken up into various houses. And so each one of those planets is going to say, when you go to your planets, when you click into it, you're going to see language like, um, let's say, for instance, Miss Mock, uh, the sun. When we go down, the sun in 12th house. So when she was born, Miss Mock was born, the sun was in the 12th house. If you go over to this chart, according to this chart, it articulates the characteristics of that house as endings healing, closure, spirituality, solitude, karma, old age, afterlife, what's hidden, limited beliefs, subconscious. So these are going to be some of the areas that as um, you will get to know, and we'll discuss briefly in the session that the sun, what the sun means, and I'm going to pull that chart up here as well. So zodiac, we're going to say zodiac sign chart, right? Again, I like to do it with, I like to pull it up with you just so you can see how I find these things. We don't gatekeep over here. We want you to see how I utilize the different resources. Um, It's not pulling up the one I really like, but I mean, yeah, here it is. 
All right, so we're going to go to this one because this has a few charts on there that we can use. But for the sun planet, for the sun, which is considered a planet in astrology, uh, the sun represents self, main concerns, and vitality. So if her son, Miss Mock's son, was in the 12th house, which represents, as we remember, endings, healing, closure, spirituality, it is saying that her main concern or her concerns with vitality and even the self um, is going to be around endings, healing, closure, spirituality, solitude, karma, and things of sort, right? And another thing about her um, son is that it is Leo. And so we can go down in this chart and see that Leo, some of the key words for Leo is Confidence and self-expression, confidence and self-expression. Of course, you can get more information about the signs. Actually, you can get it in the app at this learn button. You hit the learn button and it's going to take you here. If you go down to the signs, the 12 signs, and you go into that chart, it'll show you Leo here. As you see, it says click to learn more and it gives you all of this information about that sign, right? And so some of the session is me going over overview to see how great of a resource this um, site is for you. And this is why I want you to use this site because I really want you to use your chart. Um, I'm gonna be showing you how it is how you can use it to really help you out. We'll be discussing that in a session as well. I'll tell you how I use it to help me out on a daily basis. For the most part, I use it for my introspection work, um, just to tune into myself, to understand myself. So let's go down into what this is articulating when it comes to this. It says the sun represents your will and purpose, your sense of vitality and your e um, evolving higher self. In Leo, it is fire fixed fire and rules the heart and spine your ruling planet is the sun itself and you are likely to express yourself in dramatic and creative and assertive ways you are also likely to enjoy warmth of the physical sun you have a great energy um, courage and honesty you are likely to be self-confident and maybe even a bit self-indulgent this is talking to the person whose sun is in leo in the 12th house your challenge is, to, I'm going to skip down a little bit. Your challenge is to temper any tendency for arrogance or egotistical behavior and to instead develop humility and compassion to learn detachment and the gift of your affections so that you radiate your abundant energy freely and enhance the life experience of others around you. So in our session, when I say unpacking, we may take some of this that they say, which I love the way they um, do their translation in this app. I like, like the language that they use. I like that it gives you some descriptors and it also gives you some um, pointers. Like you may want to pay attention to this or you may want to do that or this may be a challenge for you. This is what you should do kind of thing. I love that about this. So if there's a part that stick out to you, we'll talk through that part. So I'm just going to talk through this part down here, the challenge. Your challenge is to temper any tendencies for arrogance. And so what I would tell the client here, if you know, if this was my client and I'm reading this, I would say, I definitely want you to pay attention to what arrogance means. Cause you may immediately go, oh, I'm not arrogant. Or you may say, hmm, I am pretty arrogant. But if you say, I'm not arrogant, I just want to make sure you know what arrogant may really truly means to see if you um, fall into that category because sometimes we can have an idea of what it means, but it could mean something more. Okay. So arrogant means disposed to give oneself undue importance, aggressively or haughty, um, assuming overbearing, insolent to claim for oneself or assume. So, you know, assuming who knew that arrogant is when you're assuming when you're assuming. And so you could feel like you're you're not arrogant, but you actually are assuming, which means you make you you um pass judgment quite quickly um, from your own perspective. Who, you know, we may not think about arrogant like that. So these are the type of conversations unpacking these things is what I tend to do in these sessions. Um, you may not know that you're overbearing, you may not know that you project yourself. 
And so a, a reflection or introspection work is absolutely needed. This part here, this first part where it says disposed to give oneself undue importance, meaning you may take things too personally. So taking things personally is um, is self-importance, you know, um, 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 assuming from your own perspective is self-importance and it's assuming to claim for oneself. That's that taking it personally piece. So that gives me an opportunity if I see this in there, which automatically knowing like, you know, some people may feel like I'm not really arrogant or egotistical and very giving. And you may come off that way. Truly, you may come off very giving. You don't come off as arrogant or egotistical as far as how we usually think about it. But I always want to make sure you truly understand what it means. The best way to do that is to look up the definition of etymology and really look at what the word's true meaning is. Another way I do that is I'll look up um I'll look up the synonym for that word and I'll say, well, let's look at the synonyms and see if you fit in any of those categories. And if so, you want to kind of be conscious of that. Um, not self-conscious, just conscious, like, okay, am I taking this too? too seriously am i you know that kind of thing okay so synonyms for it is aloof bossy cavalier cocky haughty uh imperious pompous presumptuous pretentious vain smug um weaker matches but matches nonetheless assuming audacious um self-important know-it-all those kind of things all right so just checking in and this is not and unpacking your chart is not to nitpick yourself apart. It's to just identify ways that you may be, you know, things that you may find yourself doing, ways that you may find yourself thinking or behaving, and just checking in um, to make sure that um, you're really living out the highest form of you the highest version of yourself. And sometimes you could not be doing that because you're not realizing certain things about yourself, right? So that's one thing the chart really helps you to do is to really kind of check yourself, you know, not in a halty or bad way. It's just check yourself just to make sure you're really showing up in your best formation. All right. Um, the, the sun in 12th house represents a concentration of the vital force to be one with the unifying forces of cosmic awareness, you are intuitively aware that you are within the source of creation. You likely identify yourself with formlessness, being more attracted to awareness itself than to any particular concrete form within it. You sense that you are more than merely a body with feelings, emotions, and thoughts. You may, in fact, reject your own boundaries because you cannot identify with any self as being separate from the universe, universal cosmic self or goddess. Conversely, you may be frustrated and feel alienated from the source and may have a tendency to seek out substitute highs in an effect to in an effort to achieve the sense of oneness you know to be true. Due to your lack of personal boundaries, you are quite sensitive to the collective unconscious as an interior realm of perception. That's 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 big. One, that's one I would definitely tell a client to pay attention to. You perceive reality as forms of creation and therefore are naturally inclined to the artistic, poetic, and musical. Your sensitivity can create, can create a need for you to periodically withdraw in order to cleanse yourself of psychic debris you've picked up in the outer world. You benefit from such retreats in order to come back to yourself and create positive boundaries of selfhood that allow you to re-enter the collective awareness with clarity and fresh perceptions that can stimulate others to clarify their own purpose for themselves as well. So this is a lot that I could unpack. I'm sure if it's not a usual language of a person um, that is doing this session who has this chart, I could possibly go into what does cosmic awareness mean, which is basically interconnectivity with everything. Um, this part that I highlighted here, due to your lack of personal boundaries, you are quite sensitive. And they articulated in there, these personal boundaries, you, They this person may lack those boundaries, not because they just green or just don't have any sense, but because they feel one with everything. So they don't really feel the need naturally to create personal boundaries. But what is showing here is that due to that, um, they may find themselves collecting unconscious um, it says sensitive to the collective unconscious, meaning 
they may find themselves um, being impacted by collective consciousness, by collect, connect, collective perception. And so that could cause issues. Um, and and it's I, they keep saying perception here and perceive your level of perception is definitely impactful in your life. The way you perceive things is how you're going to live things out. And so it gave that um, solution down here too. Like you have to retreat to make sure you're tuned into yourself and not following that self, I mean, that collective consciousness or perception and building your life around the collective, more so tuning into yourself. So as you see, I won't go any longer because I don't want this video to be too long, but as you see, Unpacking it is looking at it, seeing what the signs are, where these planets are placed in the various houses and constellations or signs when you were born. And what does that mean when it comes to your personality or how it has impacted you? And so um, it's helpful because we can go in and we can use the language of this website, which I have found to be very good. I learned of this app, this website and app from a um, teacher who I highly respect. They use this, this website, they use this app, anything that they use, I'm like, I, I'm with it because I, I absolutely honor and trust their work and their and, and um, anything that they use as a resource. And so um, it, I'm pretty sure whoever book is always pretty accurate. <laughs> and so um, we always see something in there that when we unpack it, it really is telling. And it's usually very helpful to a situation you're dealing with right now, right now, or a situation you may have been dealing with all your life. You didn't quite understand what it was. Um, because the thing is, we are uniquely made. And oftentimes, what how we're made doesn't fit a standard because there is no standard. The standard is that we're all uniquely made. And so in life, you may have tussled, you know, and um, found yourself uncomfortable because you don't fit in in different places or to other people. You know, so other people may look at you, why you act like that? Why you think like that? Why you feel like that? Well, and it's just you. And sometimes that can be very bothersome and you can go down the road of feeling like, um, I need to change. I need to be more like this or that. And, um, and that you may need to evolve in certain areas. However, how you are is uniquely made and is perfect in its own right. And yes, there is polarities to it. You could live it out in your lowest form or you can live it out in your highest form. Um, it's just up to you getting to really know yourself and then doing that work to really evolve and elevate. In consciousness, that's the most important because once you elevate in consciousness, you elevate in everything else. And so that's really the, the greatest benefit of getting to know yourself is you can continue is you can get to really evolve and be the true you at your highest self you know that's what we're talking about when we say we want to show up as our highest self that's what we're talking about is to be you exactly who you are and how you are but in its highest form you know anything can show up in the lower or the highest form anything so you can find yourself argumentative or in the low form you're argumentative and egotistical or you can find yourself aware and analytical, like either one, you know. Um, so what my prayer is, once you get this session from me, is for you to walk away with some um, general knowledge of astrology, enough for you to understand the basic of what astrology is and general knowledge of what a chart is, what a natal chart is. And the, ben the benefit of being able to know how to use this website and or app to get you more insight about who you are according to your natal chart. And with that insight, take that and first of all, work on allowing and accepting yourself, which is divine love. Uh, work on loving yourself and accepting yourself as you are. And then it, it um, allow yourself to be revealed allow it to be revealed to you what you can do to work on yourself. Meaning, um, listen to spirit as you get this insight on how you can work on evolving into your highest formation of yourself, right? That's what I pray that you're able to do when you leave this session. I also hope that um, when you leave the session, you will understand how you can use your chart 
um, quite often to help support your self-development, personal development journey, um, which absolutely that's how I use it. You know, I often look at my chart. It just depends on what's going on in life. Whatever I have going on, wherever my mind is, I'll kind of look and see which planet to just revisit to, to see if it can give me any information, you know, if it can give me some insight. And it always does. Every single time, it always does. I hope this was helpful. You know, um, I just wanted those who may not know what a natal chart is to know what it is. And also, if you've been interested in that service, I pray this um, this talk has helped you to see what that session is all about. And if you're interested in booking that natal chart unpacking session with me, which remember, I'm unpacking, I'm helping you to understand what you're seeing, what is what's in that in your chart, and then also unpacking what is it really saying about you and how and what is it saying about how you can evolve and give you room to ask questions and give some levels of insight on how you can really face that work that you have. Everyone has the work, y'all. We're all on the journey, <laughs> same journey. Trust me, we're all on the same journey facing oftentimes the same things just in different ways, right? We all have to work on ourselves and that's the best That's the best work you will do in this life is work on the self. Because when you work on evolving within your own self and loving on yourself, you truly begin to experience everything that is a part of your destiny and experiencing it in its highest form and not having to, um, you know, be on the hamster wheel or go down so many detours or find so many bumps in the road. Truly, truly. So it's always helpful in that case. All right. Well, peace and love, y'all. You can book at the link in the caption. See you soon. Peace.